All right, man, touch it up. 12 o'clock show. We in here. We in here. We in here, baby. 12 o'clock. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. 12 o'clock show. We in here. Hope y'all having a great afternoon. Go to lunch. Go to lunch. Don't smoke no weed on your break either. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all be trying to sneak that weed in. And your boss see you come back high with red eyes. He like, what's wrong with you? None? None? Yeah, chill out. All right, look, man. So today episode, we're going to be talking about is hip hop is has hip hop became too sensitive, too sensitive. And um, this is actually a great topic because I have a lot to say about it. And um, yeah, man, before I get into that, you know, I got to give my legendary spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links on the screen, cash app, PayPal's in the description. They called me the hidden gem. I went from 1300 subscribers to over, to over, to over, to over, over. John got stuck there. Sorry. To over 12,000 subscribers. And yeah, man, let me know where you're from. Also, too, um, uh, I have an episode out. It's called 200 Greatest Hip Hop Albums. I did it a couple of years ago, but I think you guys would like that episode. It's actually, a, I streamed it live. It's an hour and a half, but it's pretty entertaining. And I'm talking about the greatest hip hop album. So make sure y'all go check that out. I didn't want to re-release it because I didn't want people to think that I was trying to get over. You know what I'm saying? But make sure y'all go check that out, man. It's a pretty good episode. I might premiere it uh, tonight at eight o'clock just, just so y'all can see it. But yeah, check that out. Hey man, listen, so let's get into this, man. Let's get into this video. And uh, yeah, we be back to discuss, man. 12 o'clock show. All right, so let's go, man. Let's get it. You know what it is, man. You know what it is. <laughs> let's go. Did Kendrick take this beef too far, or did Drake's bipolar personality splits of big wig, mob boss turned butthurt bully victim trick the industry into thinking that there needs to be limitations as for what you could say in a diss song. Well, UK rap legend Skepta seems to believe that this beef was not a good look for the culture, it got too ugly, and specifically, Kendrick Lamar's allegations against Drake went too far. Now, you guys let me know, has hip-hop become too sensitive? I mean, in my opinion, the whole world has become a little too sensitive, and I do think there's a direct correlation between the rise of social media which helped fuel the career and the rise of artists like Drake, while simultaneously making this generation a lot more sensitive. Now, what I mean by that... Now, before he go any further, I totally agree. I definitely believe that this generation of hip-hop listeners and, and uh, contributors are much more sensitive to what's going on around them and to hip hop as a whole. Now, with that being said, I definitely think that Drake has painted a narrative that he is the victim in this whole situation. And he's very good at manipulating people because he's been the one for the most part, taking a lot of the shots under his breath but he plays like he is the guy that everybody is coming for so this way he can look like thanos in a situation where everybody's trying to fight him and he looks like not necessarily hero but the villain that everybody wants to get rid of if that makes sense but we're going to get into this whole sensitivity thing a little more into the video but let's keep it going is the Western world's rise in sensitivity is no accident. It's a product of social media's intense influence over how people view themselves and how they view others. Social media created an echo chamber where individuals can find quick validations for their views, reinforcing their beliefs without exposing them to genuine dissent. That's a hundred percent facts. Social media has created a way where everybody believes that they're on their own stage. And everybody has something to say. 
everybody feels as though that their point matters. Their voice matters. Now, I'm not saying that your voice doesn't matter, but you have to understand that within that, people are also protected by the unknown and what they can't see. So basically, not necessarily being protected by it, but more like more like ignoring it. So let's say, for example, um, uh, people are 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 uh, to the point that they're really sensitive. Some girl today, she put up. This was today, actually a few minutes ago, before uh, I recorded this episode. She put up the reason why I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, the reason why I'm not answering guys back is because answering you guys back. The reason why I'm not answering you guys back is because I have a boyfriend, right? Cause I have a man. She said, the reason why I'm not answering you guys back is I have a man. And I, I didn't even comment. I just put the laughing emoji inside, you know, not even in the comment. I just put the laughing emoji. She had a couple of messages on there. I'm the only person she said something to. Now she don't know me, but I'm the only person she said, What's so funny? I want to laugh too. And this is what I mean. Like people take things and they need something to engage with. You know what I'm saying? Now you put something out there and it's an option for me to actually laugh, put a heart, a uh, uh, cry, hug, all that stuff. But since I laughed, she must have thought that, again, I was being nefarious or I had some type of crazy thing going on in my head or I'm just laughing at the fact that she has a boyfriend not not she doesn't even think that I'm laughing at the fact that or she put an opening in the question more like what are you laughing at I want to laugh too as if I'm going to come on in and say well I'm laughing at you because you are crazy enough to put that on Facebook I'm not going to do that but again that goes to exactly what this whole topic is about People feel as though they have a voice and they can speak to whoever, however, whenever they could do whatever they want when it comes to social media, because you can't tell me. And if I say something to you and you don't like it, I can say something to you and then block you and then you can never respond to me. So if I criticize you, I could easily just block you and never and never get any criticism or I could put something out and easily block you and not get no criticism for it. Because, again, what he said about the echo chamber thing, that's 100% true. There's Let's plenty of it. studies that show that increased social media use, especially amongst younger people, correlates with higher anxiety and sensitivity levels. When people receive immediate feedback on their posts, likes and comments create a loop of social approval, making criticism feel like a personal attack. Rather than fostering resilience, social media enables a culture where sensitivity is rewarded and dissent becomes a threat. And this shift has crept into all areas of culture, including hip hop, which as you guys probably know, is traditionally known for its raw competitiveness. Consider the rise of rappers like Drake. And that's hundred percent facts. The, the sensitivity has crept into hip hop. And I believe that this is the reason why hip hop has fell to the point where it's at today, because there are so many, there are so many people who are in the game or, or how would I say this? People that are in the, uh, that work inside of the industry who grew up on hip hop, but didn't like the fact that it was so vulgar and they're blocking or moving things that's trying to, you know, desensitize it and make people not so aggressive when it comes to it. Now, and again, some people would say that that's a good thing that, that certain things are not aggressive, but you have to understand that, it's free speech and people should be able to rap and say whatever they want without you getting into your feelings. The same way as you go watch an action movie. You don't say that they should quit action, making action movies. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it going. Drake, whose work is often deeply introspective and emotive. Drake's music resonates with a generation that's accustomed to the immediacy and emotional affirmation of social media making his fans more likely to take critiques of him to heart. The irony is that there's a duality to this and things are just as negative on the opposite end. See, on the- Now the thing is, that's right too, because 
a lot of Drake fans feel like it's an a per it's a personal attack on them because they like him so much. And it's like you're attacking me because they some of them identified with the things that he does and he says. So you feel like that they feel like they're being attacked when you say he's trash. You say he's not trash. You trash. You trash. They'll still argue with you as if that's their brother or their cousin. Flip side, the growing obsession with social media numbers like engagement on a post or streams on a song has enabled artists like Drake to boast this inflative sense of confidence that he didn't have early on in his career. This has acted as a catalyst to enable Drake to conjure up this delusion that he could be and needs to be number one in all regards. And to his credit, he's fought hard for that position. And that was no different when Kendrick Lamar initially called him out. Drake was ready for the battle. He wanted all the smoke. Kendrick warned him that if Drake took it there, Kendrick would take it much further. And then All Like Us happened, which is where Skepta says things went too far. And we'll touch on the morality of including invalidated accusations in a diss song, which is something both Kendrick and Drake were guilty of, but what surprised me the most about this battle was the constant nagging from Drake for Kendrick to finally drop, leaving comments like use me as they have nothing to drop button, rapping things like not this time you're following through, social media putting Kendrick on this time clock to drop his record, but once the time finally came, everybody on the Canadian coast has tucked their tails, and Drake's friends in London are now saying that Kendrick took things too far. And the situation... And that's what I was saying. I didn't know that Skepta was uh, Drake's friend, but that's exactly what I was saying. That it just seems like there's the people are covering and shielding for this guy and not just being honest. You know what I'm saying? About the whole situation. Battle is battling. And if I warn you and you don't take heed to that, you know, then who fault is that? Damn sure ain't mine illustrates the hypersensitivity that social media has fostered, a climate where fans can easily interpret criticism as undue hostility, especially when it's directed at artists like Drake, whose style is deeply personal. This reactionary culture contrasts sharply to hip-hop's historical attitude towards competition and conflict. In the past, rap battles were brutal and unapologetic. Think of Nas vs. Jay-Z, where Jay threw barbed insults about Nas's personal life, or Tupac vs. Biggie, where diss tracks like Hit Em Up spared no feelings. Even in the early 2000s, when 50 Cent went after Ja Rule, there were no boundaries to what insults could be thrown. Such rivalries were respected as part of hip-hop's DNA, a space for raw expression, toughness, and resilience. Fans respected the art form, understanding that disses were not personal attacks, but part of a long-standing tradition of competition. There seemed to be this unspoken code. Anything said on wax was fair game. Today, however, there seems to be an unspoken limit to what can be said in a diss track, especially against artists like Drake, who embody the new sensitive, introspective persona that resonates with the younger audiences. Drake's My name is Sarah Sherman Samuel. Hi, I'm Jay Connold. I'm Gina McDonald. My name is Melanie Barnett. I'm Amelie Parker. <laughs> Drake's approach has redefined what it means. All right, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so let me just explain what's going on here. Um, so I have a new program that I'm using, and a lot of times um, it takes too long to edit the episode and then upload it because it takes too long. And that's the reason why, um, that's the reason why a lot of my episodes be coming out a little bit later after 8, 8 12, and, and 6. So I have to do it like this. Now, you just have to excuse certain things that happen. This is, this is recorded live, actually, even though it's not live. But I just don't, I can't, I don't have time to be listening because I got a lot of stuff I'm doing. So look, I'm just putting that out there so y'all can know, you know, I'm being honest with y'all. But um, he's, he's right about that. When it comes to that, when it comes to um, Drake um, being this sensitive, introspective rapper, uh, the limits have changed and now it's kind of like people are looking for this authenticity in some of these songs even though even though a lot of a lot of hip-hop is based around lies but they're looking for this oh well did he really do that and if you can't prove it then the song doesn't count they'll literally disqual disqualify a whole song because they feel like you should be shouldn't be saying certain things that's not true 
You know what I'm saying? But they kind of give people a pass, like Drake, when he says things that they're not true because to them it seems like it could be real. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's a bunch of hip, uh, hypocrisy going on. To be a top tier rapper, rather than projecting unbreakable toughness, he's allowed himself to be vulnerable. But this vulnerability has also fostered sensitivity amongst fans who perceive critiques of Drake as unfair or even mean-spirited. Kendrick's veiled shots at Drake sparked an uproar with some fans defending Drake as if the criticisms were personal attacks on themselves. It's a stark departure from the days when artists understood that if you entered the battle arena, all bets were off. The change speaks to a broader cultural shift. Social media has normalized an environment where people expect to be validated and protected from criticism, a far cry from the no-holds-barred tradition of early hip-hop. Drake's That's 100% facts. People do, I do believe that about a lot of these artists nowadays, they feel like that their social media followers are the shields and they will fight and defend them to the end. And that's how they feel. They feel like you can't say that about my artist. You can't say that about my, my, my guy, my friend Drake. You can't say that about him. You can't say that about these artists because they'll, they have, that's why they have these, the beehive and, and the barbs and all this stuff. Like, that's why you have all these people. People say, oh, don't diss, don't diss Beyonce because you'll get the beehive will come after you. And it's like, you ain't necessarily dissing them. You just basically just giving your grievance, even your Swifties. Oh, man, you can't say nothing about Taylor Swift. One, girl, one dude said, man, Taylor Swift got a backboard ass. And he got obliterated on Twitter, on, on, on X. Every every Swifty can. What you talking about? You're crazy. Da, 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 da. Don't you ever talk about her like that? And this is what I mean. Like, and I'm just not saying that you have to be disrespectful, but at the same time, you gotta understand that people do have their difference of an opinion, but they don't care because they're they're the bots. They come after you. Seth symbolizes this transformation. His introspective style aligns with the generation more comfortable with emotional transparency, but less tolerant of direct confrontation. The sensitivity permeating hip-hop today reflects the larger trend, the rise of a culture where boundaries are drawn around emotional safety, even in genres where conflicts once thrived. In this way, the shift in hip-hop mirrors the wider world, where sensitivity has become a currency, and the once welcome clash of ideas, sounds, and styles is now seen as something to be managed delicately, even in the gritty arena of rap battles. J. Cole's in Paul That's 100% facts, too. Sensitivity definitely has came a way for these these uh these big corporations that make money because they've been promoting this for a long time. And you can see it. They're even trying to promote it to your children. You know what I'm saying? They promote it to they I put it to you like this, and without me getting too deep, they're really trying to destroy masculinity. You know what I'm saying? That's why you see a lot of a lot of guys, and it's no disrespect to that community or community if you're a part of that community. I'm just saying that. That's why you see a lot of guys with their nails painted. Some of them wear lipstick, and they say, "Well, I'm not. I'm not that. I'm not. I'm not gay." You know what I'm saying? I'm just. This just who I am. Like, this what it is. You see, some of them wear dresses, wedding dresses, and stuff like that, and they say they're not gay. They they typically take on the persona of what usually what women would wear and would would do. You know what I'm saying? Eyelashes and stuff like that. And this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to destroy masculinity in a way because in some ways masculinity, they look at it as if it's misogyny. Because a man is masculine, they try to they try to equal that and put that together. Misogyny and masculinity, they try to bridge it and say, well, this is the same. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's what it is. Let's keep it going. Impulsive reactionary initial response to Kendrick reflects this issue perfectly. To put it simply, he was gassed up to respond to Kendrick. He likely didn't want to participate in this battle, but the pressure from social media, the backlash and negative perception he'd face by not accepting this challenge had triggered J. Cole to hop in the booth and come up with Seven Minute Drill, a record that was quickly concocted in what's described as the seven minute spurts where J. Cole gives himself a restricted time period to come up with an entire record. That could be why a lot of these disses felt insincere, the entire record itself felt rush, disingenuous, and it more so felt like a response to the general public who was egging J. Cole on to participate in this battle, then it felt like a direct shot at Kendrick Lamar himself. And if you... And even with this, right? 
Drake literally uses this guy, uh, Travis Scott, who blows his head up. And then, again, this is what I mean by being sensitive. And then Travis Scott comes out and basically bigs up Drake and say he doesn't want to be for Drake. And it's like, dog, dog, this dude literally blew your head up on stage, bro. And you are here saying you don't want to be for the dude. You know what I'm saying? He totally disrespects you in front of everybody, in front of his fans. You know what I'm saying? That's a different story. But anyway, um, I do believe that J. Cole, when he when he did seven minute drill, I think that he was felt like he was on the time limit. But I think that if you listen to seven minute drill, it to me, it just seems like he didn't have anything to say. And I'm not saying that's because. He, did, he thought that he was better than Kendrick or what's his name, but some of the bars just wasn't good. It just wasn't a good diss track. It just seemed like he just threw it out there because he had to defend himself. You know what I'm saying? Light work. Like, it's PWC and it's Cold World. Da -da 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 -da. Like, it just didn't, to me, it was like, no, dog, this is not the one. You know what I'm saying? And I'm be honest with y'all, I don't think J. Cole is good at dissing people. I'm just going to keep it 100. I think that he's really not good at dissing people. I think he, I think he's good at being a, a, a great lyricist and a great rapper, but dissing people, I think it has to be you don't know who he's talking about, because I don't think he's good at doing direct shots. I just don't think that he, he's good at that. I think he did that with Kanye, but Kanye ain't, ain't nobody like Kendrick when it comes to bars. I want even more proof that we live in an era of hypersensitivity than look no further to J. Cole's reaction seven days later after that seven minute drill record. He gets on stage, apologizes, says he mean nothing that he said in the record, showers Kendrick in praises, raps things like, I wouldn't have lost a battle, I would have lost a bro. And while you could classify this as a mature move, the audacity of J. Cole to back out of the biggest battle of this generation was just simply something we had never seen in hip hop before. And it speaks to the constant pressure that social media puts on people and the hypersensitivity that now comes with online criticism. And I'm curious to know when you guys think this started, but in my opinion, this all roots back to 2018 when Drake rapped to Pusha T that he's about to let it ring on him like Virginia Williams. Virginia Williams is the name of Pusha T's wife. On the surface, this seemed like a somewhat playful, but certainly mediocre double entendre. But at its core, this was Drake sending a message to Pusha T that he was ready to uphold the traditional values of a rap battle where there are no holds barred, everything goes, no boundaries, family, friends, acquaintances, anybody could get it. But that sentiment quickly changed when Pusha T rapped about Drake's friend 40, who suffers from a terminal illness. After unanimously winning their rap battle with the story. No, that's 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 a fact. But I also will say this about what he just said. Drake hangs around and he did hang around battle rappers. See, in the sport of battle rap, if y'all don't know, if y'all don't know, look me up, Funeral Man Battles. If y'all don't know, battle rappers talk about any and everything. And I think that the reason why a lot of battle rappers kind of had Drake back is because he definitely was in that scene with them. You know what I'm saying? And and he he did a little bit. Not he didn't never battled on on camera, I don't believe, but he definitely had some bars. Drake back in the day. But he is he he's around that scene of battle rap. You know, the whole caffeine thing. Drake has something to do with all that. You know what I'm saying? Plus, he I think Drake felt as though he wanted to put them on. But the point I'm making is battle rappers made a lot of uh, the reason why Drake feels as though he could kind of say what he was. I'm not saying they made him do that, but him hanging around them, I think he kind of like got the influence from them. Like, well, I kind of say whatever I want because this is what they do. And if I come into it with the element like they have it, it'd be something different. You know what I'm saying? Even though rap has kind of been like that, but I think Drake kind of got it. He kind of got the influence from them. We have added on Drake backed out of the beef claiming that he had a scathing disc record that he didn't want to drop because it didn't feel true to him and he felt like he was taking things too far and he'd rather leave it where it was before things got too ugly. This left a lot of hip-hop fans divided because on one end, people understood why making fun of one of Drake's friends who suffers from an illness that he can't control is taking things a bit too extreme, while others felt like this was a cop-out 
and disrespected the idea that this was just on wax. No matter how scathing the diss was, it didn't demand a reaction outside of the music. It marked an interesting precedent as Drake was able to mask his forfeiting as a sign of maturity. Yes, he admitted that he took his first quote-unquote L in the rap world, but then proceeded to talk about how his numbers were way higher than Pusha T's, and because of that, he was leagues ahead and Pusha T didn't warrant a response from Drake, given the levels of scathiness that Pusha T was willing to stoop towards. And now we get to the Kendrick Lamar. And, and that, to me, that was such a... That was at the seat. Drake is very good. At, at manipulating people him i respect him for saying he lost but then in the same breath he basically saying i lost i lost i lost but what did i really lose i'm bigger than this dude this dude ain't nothing like okay yeah i lost a battle to him but he ain't going nowhere so why does it matter it's like I, it's like me being in the street fight with somebody and he yeah he beat me but I still drove off in my Lexus and he just still sitting there on the curb doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? That that that's what I think he he, he kind of looked at that whole battle like that. Beef where Drake took a very similar approach of seemingly being one foot out the door the entire time. When Kendrick was silent, Drake continued antagonizing him, saying he was scared to drop posting pictures of Kendrick's manager on his Instagram page, using AI to rap from the perspective of Kendrick's idols to taunt him for his silence and seemingly celebrated his victory very early on, before Kendrick ever responded. Once Kendrick did respond with Euphoria, Drake came back with that same approach he took with Pusha T, dropping immature bars about Kendrick's family, seemingly again showing he was embracing the competition, while also showing that he accepted that nothing was off limits. He also stated on that record that he was about to go on vacation, again, giving himself an exit route if things became too extreme, or if the public perception shifted away from Drake's favor. Then came Not Like Us, which everyone now says is too extreme, and then came the hard part six, a desperate attempt at defending Drake's legacy while subconsciously accepting defeat by discrediting Kendrick's information and allegations, and again emphasizing that he was going on vacation. But my point with all this is, is that's 100% facts, and he did the same thing with Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? Basically, he didn't admit defeat, but he kind of said, you got this shit burned out. Yeah, like he can't say, though, I'm so much bigger than this guy. He's not going anywhere. He can't say that about Kendrick, but he basically gave up because at this point he kind of felt like he had to. Me personally, I don't think he should have gave up. I think he should have did the hard part six. He should have did it and then, and then try to do something else after that. I think they should have kept going. Um, that's just me personally. I would have liked to have see, seen Drake, you know, defend himself a little more, but... It is what it is. That Drake has had this habit since his beef with Pusha T of throwing stones and then tucking his tail. Is he really deserving of your sympathy when Kendrick repeatedly warned him not to take it further? Did he not warrant the brutality of a story of Adidon or a Not Like Us when he himself initiated the onslaught of personal attacks by calling out Kendrick's fiance or Pusha T's wife? The sensitivity aspect is a defense mechanism. Calling Rick Ross racist for saying that Drake's a white boy is a defense mechanism. So that when it's all said and done, you can look back on this beef and be like, this was everyone ganging up on Drake. This was people making heinous allegations against him, calling him a PDF file. And Drake embraced the spirit of competition, but was mature enough to back out when it was taken too far. In my opinion, that's a hundred percent facts. That's what I was saying earlier. That's exactly what he does. You know what I'm saying? And this is what I mean by the fans shielding for him. They definitely shield for him. A lot of his fans sit back and they they sit online and wait for people to like me to make videos or a couple other people, big kids, moan, chilling with money. All the they look at us, the Ville, and they say, Oh, y'all the biggest Drake house. People in my Drake comments say, Oh, you you really milking this Drake thing. Like, no. Not milk. I'm not milk. This is just what I want to talk about. I could talk about whatever, but this is what I'm talking about today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if I want to talk about Drake every day, I will. If I want to talk about Kendrick every day, I will. If I want to talk about Trump, I will. I talk about anything I want to talk about on this channel. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it is what it is. But this is what I mean by they, they, they sit back and they wait for you to say something because they want to shield for that dude.
And this is a cop-out. This is a precedent that Drake set with his 2018 beef with Pusha T and a victim mentality strategy that emerged in the social media era that no other rapper has used before Drake. I personally didn't love the aspect of the beef where both of them were throwing allegations out against each other with no actual sources to back up any of the claims they made. But anything Kendrick said about Drake being into a mom I don't know about that. Again, I, I, I hate to do this, but again, we seen Drake on stage with a 17 year old. I like how your breasts feel against my chest. He likes young women. That's what basically Kendrick is saying. He's older man. She was 17. That's what he was saying. So I understand. I understand why people keep saying that there's no evidence of it. It's right there. He didn't love the aspect of the beef where both of them were throwing allegations out against each other with no actual sources to back up any of the claims they made. But anything Kendrick said about Drake being into A minors or being a PDF file was said by Drake before in Taylor Made Freestyle. He literally rapped, talk about him liking young girls. He tried to pull the eight mile approach. He knew that these allegations were out there already and tried to rap about them to basically beat Kendrick to the punch. But when Kendrick did it in a much catchier way, we then get the hard part six from Drake where he's rapping about everything Kendrick's saying is a bunch of BS. Drake is done with this battle because it's gone to a point where all these allegations are just fake news and he basically rapped, the ones you're getting your information from, they're all clowns. It seems like Skepta was on the side of Drake in thinking that Kendrick's allegations were heinous, false, and taking things too far. He recently did an interview with Ebro where he spoke about the bad taste that he had in his mouth about this entire beef in that things got too personal. Ebro agreed with him that there was a lot of lies that were thrown out but again, it's important to remember on Taylor Made Freestyle, Drake rapped, talk about Drake liking young girls. That's a gift for me. If it is a lie, he put that lie in Kendrick's hand before Kendrick ever rapped it. When stuff gets said like that now, today, it's more personal. I think there's something about- There was a lot of lying on it. There was a lot of lying. In Skepta's opinion, this moved far away from being a traditional hip hop battle when things got personal, and it showed him that Kendrick really did have this disdain towards Drake really did hate Drake, and the whole thing stopped being fun when Kendrick started making these brutal allegations towards Drake, letting the world see how ruthless he could really be. There was one K-Dot diss track that came out, and I was like, oh, this is this is over. Like, this isn't about, this isn't rap, this isn't a rap diss and clashing anymore. No, no, they don't like each other. This, this is really, this is over. Like, yeah. they don't like each other. It's yeah. clear, I can hear it. Like, yeah, I can yeah, hear yeah. it in his voice. He doesn't like Drake. When it sounded like you two just really want to see each other, and do each other something. And Ebro brought it back to the days when Tupac rapped about sleeping with Biggie's girl, or when Pusha T spoke about 40's terminal illness, basically saying he didn't like when things got too personal either, but it was always a part of battle rapping. I was like that would hit him up. And and I even said the same shit when Pusha T and Drake was doing their thing and he said the shit about 40. I was like, nah, nah, I don't like that, I don't like that, I don't like that. But then there's people who are like, nah, and then you see like the battles, the, the uh, URLs and all that type of shit, and you're like, whoa, yeah. it goes far. And while Ebro attributes his disdain to these- That's exactly what I was saying earlier. He got, it seems like not just Drake, but a lot of, a lot of rappers get this stuff from URL and KOTD and all these joints. Not to say they take everything from them, but they made it to where people are not as, they're not as uh, sensitive towards you saying certain things in these battles. You know what I'm saying? Now you have your other side of it. I'm just saying for some people, they, they want that. They want him to talk about 40's illness. Like, yo, speak about his illness, bro. Say something about his illness. Say something about his wife. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, say his wife, the baby not even his, bro. Say that brutal personal attacks as being more mature and seeing that petty insults do more harm than good in a rap battle. Skepta attributes it more to the fact that both artists are massive, both of them have massive corporate deals, and by throwing these allegations against one another, more specifically the brutal one of Kendra calling Drake a PDF file, can tarnish his reputation in irredeemable ways and it makes things a lot bigger than just a rap battle because now you're losing sponsorships, brand deals, and it prohibits you from climbing the corporate ladder because big brands don't want to associate with someone with such heinous allegations attached to their legacy. 
Maybe, maybe you know what? It's age. No, do you know what I think it is? Because they are in positions where they are both... The biggest. They are both really big, have major deals, major cahoots with major companies. Talking to each other like this is looking crazy. You're calling him a word, but he, bro, this guy's signed to thing. So now, how can they sign a man that is being accused of this thing? And Skepta brings it back to rap beefs he's had of his own, stating that there was a bigger difference because he was not at the same stature as a Drake or a Kendrick Lamar. He didn't have as much to lose. He didn't have brand deals to lose. If anything, it boosted his reputation because all publicity is good publicity. So if he's beefing with someone and they're throwing out heinous allegations against him, it just brings more eyeballs to any conflict or music that he puts out in the future. But I think what he's getting at here is that because there's such big forces within the culture, because they have such massive influence that stretches far beyond the scope of the underground rap battle scene, by engaging in and conforming to the rules of a traditional rap battle, they're seemingly destroying the opportunities that they've built for themselves. So now the things that, when I was clashing in grime, we never had nothing to lose. There you go, this is where I'm landing now. So, so, right, so when right, we're right, saying like things to each other, you could call me anything in the world. I'm not gonna lose a Nike deal. Right. I'm not gonna not be able to put food in my, that probably even get me more money because we'll go to the show and do the clash on the stage and more people are paying and rarely, you know what I'm saying? So the it's version help, they was doing it's was hurting. Us. It's hurting what we've it's hurting what we've built. And I gotta say, I highly disagree with this point because the lower Kendrick stooped, the more scathing the allegations got, the more opportunities he was granted in the future. He was able to go out and do a pop-out concert, which united all of LA and brought multiple gangs who in the past had conflict with each other on stage together to dance to that very same song that Skepta is claiming is hindering them from obtaining greater opportunities or destroying everything they've built. Again, I kind of understand where he's coming from with that. But at the same time, I think that um, what, what the homie right here is saying is absolutely right. I don't think they did went low enough, like I said in the last video. I don't think they went low enough. I think that Kendrick should have kept going. I think he should have kept going and not stopped. You know what I'm saying? I think he should have tried to obliterate him because <clears throat> Drake's been doing this for years and he needs to be checked. That's just the bottom line. You know what I'm saying? That's just it. But again, it didn't stop nothing. After that, he was nominated for seven different Grammy Awards for that very same record where he's calling Drake a PDF file. And he was also awarded the opportunity to perform that song, or maybe not that song, but to perform in general on America's largest stage, the Super Bowl halftime show. So was he really destroying everything he worked for, or was he only drawing a line in the sand between what he stands for and what he believes the other side stands for, and as a result was able to garner more success and opportunity from his victory by strictly following the traditional standards of a rap battle. And Skepta continues emphasizing the negative effects that this battle can have towards the next generation, towards other rappers around them, how it limits them from opportunities, and how if they really had these personal disdains towards each other, they should have either talked it out or just refused to engage instead of just talking crazy to each other on records like this. It's hurting what we've all built this whole time, like you two, man. If you don't like each other, just link up and talk to each other, sort it, or don't speak to each other because, but all this stuff you're saying to each other, for the rest of everyone else who is waiting in line for the doors that you've kicked open, these doors are shutting on us right now, bro. We're looking crazy out here. That's why I didn't like that. It was. I don't know about that. And uh, and and again, I I feel like he's siding with Drake by saying some of these things because people are more looking at or worried about from Drake's side. They're more worried about what Kendrick said about Drake being a PDF. That's what I believe. The reason why he's saying all this. But until they started sounding so like, like it just sounded crazy, bro. And I gotta say, I just don't see where he's getting at here. I don't see how this destroys any opportunity for Kendrick, any opportunity for anyone around either party. The only one that I see this having a negative effect on is Drake. But that's the risk you take when you partake in a battle like this. What do you expect to happen when you're calling out someone's fiance? When you're accusing them of abusing her? When you're accusing your opponent's fiance of having a kid? with your opponent's manager. Like, Drake was getting as dirty as Kendrick was, and if you wanna say both of them were wrong for lying on wax, then that's a different story. But no matter how big both of them are, 
talking crazy in a rap battle, as long as it doesn't get violent, in my opinion, should not be taken as anything much more serious than simply talking crazy in a rap battle. It's also important to point out that with the quote unquote big three seemingly having their back and forth with this entire battle in 2024, with things looking a little bleak in terms of who's going to take on that torch and reach new heights that Drake, Hendrick, and J. Cole have not attained, it's tough to say when we'll ever or if we'll ever get a moment like this again in mainstream hip hop. I mean, after Tupac and Biggie, we had Nas and Jay-Z, then we had Eminem and 50 Cent versus Ja Rule, now we got Drake versus Meek Mill, Pusha T, and now Kendrick Lamar. This is a common practice amongst many of the greats within the culture. I don't see why the rules should be changed now, regardless of your stature or regardless of the scathingness of the insults that are thrown at you. It's part of the sport. But let me know what you guys think. Did Kendrick take it too far? Did Drake take things too far? Is hip hop just becoming a little too sensitive? Is the world. Yeah. So make sure y'all go follow him. Links will be in the description. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I believe that the sensitivity level has risen and a lot of people are very, very much so protective over people they like. You know what I'm saying? And that goes for even Kendrick fans, too. I think Kendrick fans are a little more... uh how would I say this? Optimistic, a little more. And I think Drake fans are a little more pessimistic. I think Drake fans, Drake fans will defend him even when they know he lost. They'll even try to find a win inside of the loss. They'll be like, oh, meet the Grams don't matter because he lied in that song. And it's like, really? The song doesn't matter? Well, how did I was, was the song good? It don't matter if it was good. He lied. So it doesn't matter. And it's like, it does matter. Was the song good? Was Drake was lying too. Well, not really. You can't prove that he was lying, but you can prove that Drake, that Kendrick was lying because Drake ain't got no other kid. He'd be like, so I think that what he's saying, it's true. And we have became this, this nation of everybody is very aware and very, uh, how would I say it? It's not more of aware, but um, everybody is more on the lines of they don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. You know what I'm saying? Like if someone says something, they have to think about everybody else's feelings before they say it. You know what I'm saying? This is why Simon Cowell was so popular because he did not care about people's feelings. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you feel, get yourself together. But I'm going to tell you how I feel. And if you don't like it, that's it. But you know what happened after a while? People wanted to hear from him because they were saying, well, he's the only one that's going to actually tell the truth and not spare your feelings. Because some people, they don't know how to take things and they get upset or they get butthurt over it. They don't know how to take stuff. You can say something to them and they take it to another level. They don't know how to take it. So this is the reason why I say what he's saying in this in this verse. Hip hop has become the sensitive genre. Hip hop used to be hardcore. It used to be pushing the envelope. It used to be different. Now it's at the point where you can't even say anything to certain people because either their fans are attack you or they'll do a whole interview about how sensitive they are about the whole subject. Not saying that they're sensitive, but talking about it. I can't believe that they said that. Like it's like, well, this is hip hop. You niggas just know what time it is. Like, it is what it is. But, hey, man, look. Thank y'all for being here with me, 12 o'clock show. Love y'all, man. Y'all have yourself a good afternoon, man. Go back to work. I know it was, I know this episode was pretty long. I know you were probably back at work. And, I, and another thing, too, I want to say this before I get out of here. I'm going to try not to curse as much unless it's warranted because I know people listen to me at work. And I don't want to be cursing all crazy and you listen to me at work. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like somebody said I was a superstar. I ain't that. I ain't quite yet a superstar. But I want to be responsible enough to say certain things and not curse. So this way everybody can listen to me. You know what I'm saying? But thank y'all, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Love y'all, man. See y'all. Peace.